Welcome to the EMAS ITAM product demonstration. As the world is progressing towards digitalization, authentication is imperative in the note of identity and transaction management for every action performed using digital identity. With malware and other cyber security threats constantly thrown at enterprises, a holistic security platform is required to securely enable digital identity and transaction management. eMudra's flagship product, eMudra Authentication Server, eMAS, has been empowering millions of users securely manage their online identity and authentication needs by offering a single holistic security perspective. This video will give you a demonstration of eMAS, a multi-factor authentication and IAM with single sign-on feature. Plain username and passwords and OTPs are today most vulnerable for cyber attack. EMAS offers the ability to attach users to a risk profile to allow creation of trusted networks using PKI, offering strongest forms of protection to enterprises and its customers. EMAS IAM comes with the ability to authenticate 15 plus forms of authentication right up from OTP to adaptive authentication. Let us now log in to look into all the features in detail. This is the dashboard with controlled access rights to all the features. We will now look into all the individual exclusive features in detail. EMAS IAM has a feature dedicated for user management that simplifies creating and managing users. You have three options to create users. You can create or enroll users manually. You can also bulk upload your users using a CSV or XLS files and also create users using the LDAP connections. Under the using user management, you can also modify, activate, deactivate and delete users. Similarly, group management helps in simplify creating and managing groups. Using the group management feature, you can manage and create groups, rename groups, add users to their group, remove users from a particular group, activate, deactivate and delete groups as well. Using the role management, you can create roles and manage roles. You can create roles like manager, administrator, etc. and modify, activate, deactivate and delete roles. Proceeding to the next feature, the access request workflow feature is a multi-step approval workflow through which end users can request access to apps, resources, groups, etc. Admins can designate approvers to grant or deny access accordingly. The authentication feature has three options. The first is where you can manage your enrolled users. You can manage the authentication settings and register the hard token. With the transaction par man parameter management feature, you can create, modify, activate, deactivate and delete parameters in your organization. The severity management helps you in managing, creating, modifying, activating and deactivating severity. So let us now create a severity. So let us name the severity as severity1 and click on create. Similarly, let us create another severity naming it as severity2. Create. So we have successfully created two severities. Proceeding further, you can manage your apps and resources as well. So your apps and resources can be created and managed. So in order to create the app, you can key in the app's name and the logout URL. Here are some of the uh, apps that we've already created for the particular login. Similarly, the resources and Resources can also be managed and created. So in order to create the resource, you have to key in the resource name, resource type 
and select the app. Enter the resource URL which includes redirection URL and the access denied URL can also be gated. So here are some of the resources that we have already created. With risk profile, you can create conditional access policies that apply to groups as well as individual users. High risk groups can be given more restrictions than the low risk groups or two step verification can be required for high risk cloud apps and skipped for lower risk ones. So let us now create a risk profile for a user. So the risk profile can be created for a group user or any particular role. So I would be creating the risk profile for a user here. I'm entering the user's name, the app, and the resource. You can also decide if you want to give only read or the write access as well and define the access type if it is with no time limit or for a temporary access. So here I would be selecting the severity which we already created that is the severity one and click on create. So you can now see that for a user, I have mapped the eBank1 resource with eBank1 severity and eBank2 resource with eBank2 severity. The policy management helps you in creating and managing the policies. So as we uh, mentioned earlier, you can create conditional access policies that apply to any particular user or group. So let us now create a few policies. Depending, you, depending upon the severity name that you have given, you can add n number of modes of uh, authentication type ranging from password, SMS OTP or email OTP and so on. Similarly, you can manage your policies that have been created. So for example, for the eBank one, we have password as the first factor authentication and SMS OTP as a second factor. Whereas for the eBank2 application, we have password as the first factor authentication and grid-based authentication as the second factor. You also have an option to edit and update any changes to a particular risk profile or can also delete the risk profile that you have created. The activity log keeps a track of all the activities performed by you as well as the other users. So the LDAP feature helps you in managing and creating your LDAP connections. Similarly, SAML attributes can also be mapped and managed. The reports will give you an exclusive option to uh, reset your passwords for your particular department, change the passwords, the policy changes. And you can also create the user per department where you can generate the reports for all these particular categories. And my reports gives you an option to schedule all the reports. So let us now log in to the two apps that we have just created and mapped our policies and risk profiles and see how the, uh, the user will be challenged with the authentication modes to have access to the application. So here I am logging into the eBank1 application. So for the eBank1 application, we had set password as and SMS OTP as the authentication mode. So here I am entering my password as the first authentication step and now as you can see it prompts the user to enter the OTP that uh, the user would receive on the mobile which is the second factor authentication. So I am now entering the OTP that I have received and click on authenticate. So as you can see, I have now uh, access to the eBank1 application. Similarly, we shall now look into the eBank2 application where 
The most interesting exclusive feature of uh, identity and access management is the single sign-on solution that addresses the critical need for automated tools that can efficiently manage web users and their access to web applications, portals and services. So the solution provides a modular approach for implementing process and systems that support centralizing user authentication and authorization to all web applications and services. So we will now log into the second uh, resource that is the eBank2 and we had set password and grid based authentication as the two factor authentication for accessing the particular portal. So I am now logging into the application 2 that is the eBank1. So if you can observe it is not prompting me to enter the password again because I am already authorized in the first step or when I was accessing the first application. So I will now have to enter only the grid. I have now uh, keyed in the grid details from my particular grid card and would click on authenticate. So I have now accessed the eBank2 application as well. As we all know, single sign-on is a feature where once I log out of one application, I would be automatically be logged out of the rest of the applications. So if you can see here, I am logged into the eBank1 as well as the eBank2 application. So when I log out of the eBank1 application, and try to access any one of the attributes from the eBank2 application, I would be automatically logged out. This is how the single sign-on feature works. Let us now look into some of the other features where you have an option to block particular users. So where you can block a user if they enter uh, inappropriate passwords or any authentication mode that they're challenged with you can set a time limit and you also have an option where you can block a user for a particular period of time proceeding further you can also activate and deactivate your dormant users based on their access to any particular applications or resources Proceeding further, you can also set your uh, password. You can have a periodic password reset option. You can manage your Active Directory and risk profile settings as well as email templates. And adaptive configurations can also be done based on the IP address, device registration and the attribute weightage. Hope this video gave you a detailed demonstration as to how EMAS IDAM can be helpful to you. Thank you for watching.